My name is Bree, and I wanted to create a video to give you guys some tips and tricks from my perspective of you know how to take and pass the NCLEX. I watched a million and one videos, and to be honest, they just overwhelmed me. So I wanted to create a short and sweet video, get straight to the point, no fluff. Uh, just a little bit about me. I completed my second degree accelerated BSN program in this past February. I started in January of 2020, finished in February of 2021. It was a 14 month program and then I took the NCLEX in April and I passed. So I will be working in the medical surgical ICU and I start in two weeks. So, all right. About my program, we used ATI. I don't know if every program uses this, but it seems like from my friends that I've talked to that most schools do use ATI. If you don't know what ATI is, it's basically you, it partners with your nursing school and it's just a way for you to do endless practice questions, uh, simulations, scenarios, stuff like that. And we use the heck out of it because our most of our clinicals got canceled and um, we even didn't have class in person. So we were virtual entirely for my program, I would say 98% of the time. Um, we went back to clinical twice. And um, yeah, so I had about a total of seven weeks, eight weeks of clinical my entire 14 month program, which is really unfortunate. Um, but we used ATI as our, as our you know, go to for those virtual simula virtual clinicals, and we did s simulations on them. So, if you have ATI, if you have ATI, and your school's offering it as a resource to use after you're done school, like the study for the NCLEX, take advantage of it, and do not purchase another program. Don't purchase um, oh man, what are those other ones? I know Kaplan has one. U World, in my opinion. And I was going to purchase them, but in my opinion, after having you know used ATI and studied for it and passed, you don't need it. I, like I said, passed with 75 questions, and all I did was study with ATI. Okay, so if you have ATI, then this will be great for you because you can pretty much follow exactly what I did. So at the end of your nursing program, you're going to have to take the predictor. And that's ATI and your nursing program's way of predicting how well you are going to do on the NCLEX. So um, for my school, our goal is a 74%, which equates to a 96% chance of passing the NCLEX, I believe. 96 or 94% chance of passing the NCLEX. So using that predictor, using the score you get from your predictor, or whatever score you get with the you know predictor comprehensive exam that your school is going to give for you, Hopefully your school, like the ATI does, breaks it down into uh, different, you know, aspects of what you did well on, what you did poorly on. So I know personally for me, I struggled with pharmacology, um, maternity, pediatrics. Those are my top three that I was not comfortable in, right? I knew even before I took the predictor that I wasn't going to do well in those because those classes were the hardest for me, right? So those three topics, okay? So if you look at your comprehensive predictor, at the, at the bottom of your test, it should break it down for you. Use that to your advantage. So if you know that you struggle in certain topics, for example, for me, I struggled in those topics. I wrote those down and then... I decided that I was going to study over 30 days. I did not study every single day for 30 days. I took off about one day per week. Maybe two weeks. Maybe for two weeks I would take off one day. But I wasn't going studying straight through, right? So what I did is I wrote out a plan for myself. I studied pharmacology for three days. What did I do? I did two days of taking a practice exam, right? So again, I used ATI. I used ATI's practice exams. They have practice exams broken down in each setting. So practice exams for pharmacology, practice practice exams for maternity, medical surgical, pediatrics, okay? So I did two days of practice exams in a particular topic. On the third day, 
I did what's called board vitals and this more closely mimics the NCLEX and you can select questions. So I would do on this third day, I would do moderate and hard board vital questions in the particular topic that I studied. Okay, so does that make sense? Those are three days. I did two, two days of practice exams in a particular topic. In that same topic, I did board vitals, moderate and hard questions, and they were definitely hard. Um, I was told in the practice assessments with ATI, you want to score above a 70. In the board vitals, you want to aim for 60 and above if you do moderate and hard questions. Now, at the end of each of these, so the beautiful thing about ATI is it gives you rationales. And I know UWorld does too. So after you take these practice exams or as you're going along, write down in a notebook all of the, all of the rationales to the questions you're getting wrong. So I can show you right here. I took notes. So all of this is, oh wait, <laughs> all of this is notes that I did, right? Throughout my studying. So I did three days of farm, then I moved on to my next topic that I was struggling with. Three days of maternity, then I moved on. Three days of pediatrics, then I was more comfortable with med surge. Three days of med surge. Two days or three days of mental health. Um, nutrition. And there was a couple of other ones that I can't think of right now, other topics. So that's, that's how I studied it. It was very simple, very straightforward. Do not overcomplicate this. Do not sit there and trying to do hundreds of questions at a time. My assessments were between 60 and 90 questions. And then after those questions or during the assessments, I would be writing down my notes. So I was studying for about three to five hours at a time, you know, per day. But if I started to get really tired and I was just like, getting really over it, then that's a sign that you need to take a break, right? We're not in nursing school actively anymore when you're studying for the NCLEX after nursing school. You need to take those breaks as needed. You're not on a deadline, right? So do keep yourself on a schedule. Do try and keep to your to your plan, but you need to take days off and you need to put down the notepad, put down the pencil, get up and walk around when you're starting to get fatigued and tired. I mean, I guess you should be doing that during nursing school anyway, right? Those are good studying habits. But I'm just saying to overwhelm yourself and to stress yourself out while you're studying for the NCLEX makes everything a thousand times worse and your brain's not going to be receiving any material that you're reading, right? So I also wanted to point out this book. If you have, this might be backwards, but if you are, um, if you use ATI for your school, I don't know if all schools send this out, but ours did. Ours sent out a comprehensive NCLEX R and Review book. Even if your school doesn't send one out, I know that there are, you can purchase these through ATI um, and you can purchase um, them through other companies as well. I'm sure you've gotten names for them. I can't remember they're off the top of my head because I didn't order any. But one thing that I really liked in this, in this book that I did read was the pharmacology section. And I read through all 30 pages and it basically summarized what you needed to know for um, pharmacology. So I'll just show you real quickly. It was really helpful for me. So they broke it down into common drug classifications. That's going to be really helpful learning the suffixes of the drugs, right? Um, anyway, so it just broke it down. You know, little topics. It would do cardiovascular. I have no idea if this is going to be backwards, and I'm sorry if it is. Um, mental health, nervous system, you know, stuff like that. So anyway, I'm just saying that these comprehensive NCLEX review books are super helpful too, just to help you organize the material in your head. Writing down information that you need to understand because you've gotten the question wrong. That's going to be really good for you. And actually on the last three days before my test, the day before you take a te the test, you don't want to do anything. You don't want to study nothing because you just need a fresh brain. You need to be chilled out and relaxed, not overwhelmed. The third day, one, two, the th three days before um, your test, or I guess two days before your test, um, 
I reviewed all of this material. So all of the notes that I had taken from the last, you know, month or whatever of um, studying, I reviewed it all, you know. And then the day before that, so three days before, I'm sorry if this is confusing, backtracking a little bit here, um, I took the predictor, I retook the predictor. I sat down, I closed my windows, shut my door, made sure my phone was off, and during the NCLEX, you can't like drink water actively, so I didn't even drink water. I mimicked how it would be for the NCLEX, and I retook the predictor. Um, you know, just so I could get my head in the right space and just prove to myself that I could do it. Now, during the test, during the test, um, I don't know if all locations are going to be similar. Now, I'm down in South Carolina now, so um, less strict here with restrictions, I guess. Um, even though I still had to wear a face mask and all that good stuff, but, um... You know, you sit at your you sit at your computer. You're allowed to move around. You're allowed to look around because they have that other room. There's no way for you to cheat, so you can look around. Um, you're gonna have a whiteboard about this size and a marker, and you are supposed to write down everything, um, like math wise, on this notepad or on the the paper, or whatever. But you can't do any brain dumps, right? Um, I got no math questions at all, so you might not ha even have any math questions, but do make sure you practice those. And you can take your time. There's no rush. I was told that we can take, you can take a break when you need to take a break. Like, if you need to go pee, you need to go pee. Ask to use the bathroom. Um, but there are scheduled in breaks, so after a certain amount of time, it will prompt you to take a break. Um, minimum 75 questions. Thankfully, I got 75 questions and I was done. Um, maximum, I believe, is 180, if I'm, I might be wrong on that. Um, take your time. Do not rush. Do not change your answer. Do not change your answer. Do not change your answer. That should have been drilled in your head through nursing school, but if you have not been following that advice, now is the time. After, you know, one year accelerated program, year and a half, after two years, after four years, trust your gut, gut instinct when you're taking this test right? Whatever you have learned, you have learned at this point. Do not second guess yourself. Do not change the answer, okay? I wish you the best of luck. I know you're going to do wonderful. If you do end up watching this video, I am curious uh, when you're taking the NCLEX and what field you are interested in going into or maybe what position you've already accepted so I can wish you luck. Okay, bye.